Okay, so the first step here is to pair these two devices together. So there's actually a few different light switches that look kind of like this, and they all have something in common, and that is that they can emit a radio frequency between this thing and this switch. And you can tell which ones can do this based on this little squiggly arrow line in the lower right corner of the switch right there. And I think there's actually some dimmer versions of this as well. I don't have any of those. I'm not sure if the instructions on those are slightly different from what I'm about to show you or not, but just so you know, there is a dimmer version of this as well. There's actually a couple different versions of this one here. A key difference between them is one of these types does require a neutral wire in the wall and one of them does not. And one nice thing about the one that does require a neutral wire is that it's completely silent. This one right here is the type that does not require a neutral wire and you'll notice that it does make a little clicking sound whenever it turns on and off. I don't know if you can hear that or not but uh, you can also tell when it's on and off based on whether this little LED light is on or off. So the light is on light is off. You get the idea. So once you've got this thing properly installed and also this thing properly set up with the battery in it, the first step is to pair these two devices together so that they know each other and they will communicate with each other. And just so you know, it's actually possible to set up multiple sensors to control one switch like this. And also you can set up multiple switches like this to all be controlled by one sensor. So for this example, we're going to keep it pretty simple. There's just one switch and one sensor. So the first step here is to click this thing and hold it for six seconds until you see this light start blinking. So there we go. Okay, so now it is waiting to be paired with one of these things. And uh, once that's blinking, you can do the exact same thing over on here and you'll see this little tab that has a little light bulb right next to it. We're gonna do the same thing and hold that down for six seconds as well. Okay, there we go. And you'll notice. So this thing started blinking rapidly like that. And then this switch just turned on and off a few times. Now we know that they're connected. Okay, so once you have this motion sensor paired with the appropriate light switch, you'll notice some buttons right here on the front and then also some buttons right here on the back. So one here on the left that has a little light bulb next to it. That is just a test to make sure that the thing is paired with the light switch. So when I hit this, I should be able to, to hear and see the light go on. So you can't see this in this video, but I can see the light off to the right of me. It's a light in a closet and I can see it going on. And when I click this again, I can see it turn off. So I know it's working. And then uh, this right here is the test. So this is basically just to test the coverage of the sensor so that you can sort of move around in the room. And uh, the idea is if you see that light on just solid like that, that means it is currently sensing motion. And if you just get really still, don't move at all, having a really hard time sitting still, but basically if it does not see you or does not sense any motion, then that light is gonna turn off. So you can just kind of test it out and see, hey, is this seeing me or not? Now on the back here, you're actually gonna see some fairly clear instructions about what each one of these three buttons do. So once this thing is paired correctly with your light switch, it should be somewhat self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna show you right now exactly what it does. So this one over here on the left, what this is controlling is the auto on function. So D1 want the thing to turn the light on the second it senses motion or do you want it to not do that so that it's only going to turn the light on if you press the button manually but after it doesn't sense motion for a certain period of time which you can uh, control here then it's going to turn off so that's the other mode where there's also this low light mode so that uh, based on how much ambient light is in the room it may turn on if there's not enough ambient light but if there is enough ambient light it's not gonna turn on. So in order to program this part of the sensor, you just push this button over here on the left, which controls all the ones in this column. And you'll notice that that bottom light turned on, which means it's currently set to disabled. So right now, this light does not turn on unless I hit the switch and then it will automatically turn off after a certain period of time when it does not sense motion. So that's the current setting. If we wanted to change that, we would just click this and hold it until it starts blinking. And that means we can start changing it. So now we're going to click it again. And now it's set to the low light mode if we wanted to have this set to be auto on. So it just turns on no matter what, whenever it senses motion. Now we'll notice that this top one is blinking. So 
uh, whatever you want it to be. You just make your choice. I'm gonna bring it back down to disabled because that's how I want this particular motion sensor to work. And once you've landed on your final choice, you just click it and hold it again until it turns solid and there you go. And I say click, but there's actually no clicking sound. So I don't know why I'm saying that, but just push the button down. So this next one over here is activity. And the activity just means how much motion is it gonna take to trigger this motion sensor to turn on the lights. You can have it be very high sensitivity, and that's this top one here, where it just shows a little stick figure guy just sitting there. So for example, if you have this in an office and you want just the slightest movement to turn the lights on, that would be an ideal one for that top one. And then the medium one, which is the next option down, it's gonna take a little bit more motion to turn it on. And then the one at the very bottom with the guy running, that's high activity. So this is the least sensitive setting and can be used for spaces that will generally only experience large motions such as foot traffic. And that's all coming to directly from the instructions. So uh, I'm gonna set mine to low activity, which actually means it's highly sensitive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing where I just push this thing down until it starts blinking. And then, well, it's already there. But if I wanted to move it around, I could do that, do that. And whichever one you want it to be, uh, just push it again until it turns solid. And you're good to go. Now this last one over here is the timeout mode. So you actually have four different ways you can do this. You'll only see three here, five minutes, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes, but you can also do it for one minute. And I'm gonna show you how to do each of those right now. So it's pretty much the exact same thing here where you just push this thing until it blinks. And uh, currently you'll notice that all three of them are blinking. That's because it's set for one minute. So if you want it to be set for one minute, you should see all of these things blinking. So if I push this thing again, so now it's set for five minutes. If I push this again and hold it until it's solid, this would be 15 minutes. This would be 30 minutes. And again, if I push it again and all three of them are blinking like that, now it's set for one minute. So I'm just gonna push this again until they turn solid. And there we go. So now it's set to turn off after one minute. One note on this, uh, this thing is battery powered. And when I first got this thing, I was a little bit worried about that because I didn't want to have to change batteries all the time. But just so you know, I've had this thing for about three years now. It probably gets triggered to turn lights on and off 10 to 20 times every single day for the past three years. I still have not had to change this battery. This is supposed to be a 10 year battery, I think. And I believe this did come with the motion sensor. So just so you know, if you're worried about that, don't be. It's not really a big deal. These things last a really long time. Now, once you've got this thing programmed and everything is set the way you want it, uh, you'll have to screw this thing into the ceiling and then you just uh, put this up there and twist it into place and there you go. It just sits up there like that. And it doesn't really matter what orientation it is because uh, it's gonna sense anything below it. And again, you can test that out using the little test tab. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna have links to this motion sensor as well as a few others and a few other switches that can be paired with this beneath this video. And also I've got some other tutorial videos on different Lutron motion sensor switches. So if you need help programming any of those other kinds, I'll have links to those as well. So thanks for watching. I wish you all the best with your motion sensor and light switch.